morning. So it's the 1st of May and I'm just walking up the A6 out of Leicester to find the starting point for section 2 of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path. So we'll just find out where we left off last time and uh, carry on round today about 11 or 12 miles round the edge of Leicester hopefully to Narborough Station to get a train home. Thanks for coming along hope you enjoy it. So here's where we uh, finished coming out on Gorse Lane onto the A6. Pavement carries on a few hundred yards but uh, then peters out in the countryside so that's the end of those magical spots where you can walk into Leicester all on pavement. Officially the end of the city I guess. And some days later I've managed to get across that busy road and here we start section 2 of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path owed be to Narborough. Here we go. So, uh, this part of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path, uh, Section 2, starts where we left off on the A6 in Oadby and strikes out initially uh, across the countryside, uh, past the golf course before heading back towards the edge of Leicester around Wigston. And uh, we'll drop down the edge of Wigston on a mixture of footpaths and permissive paths and uh, through the edges of estates I suspect until we hit the Grand Union Canal Leicester uh, section and then we'll walk along that through Kilby Bridge and along the edge of South Wigston um, and we'll go quite a long way along that canal which seems to skirt where the city and the countryside join each other We'll leave the canal uh, just past South Wigston and head uh, more south to skirt round Blaby and then around the edge of Wetston. Um, in Wetston I couldn't get across from the housing estate to the industrial estate as we'll see so I had to divert up and around uh, the roads along Dug and Gun Lane and then drop back down across the M1 but otherwise the route went fairly much to plan. Then again across a golf course and then on to Cosby Road just north of Cosby. Cosby doesn't really count as the edge of Leicester I think because there is some countryside there although I think there is pavement all the way from Cosby into Leicester so perhaps I should have gone the other side of Cosby but there we go. So I'll pick up Cosby Road and walk through Littlethorpe to Narborough Station and that completes section 2 of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path. So for the first little bit of this walk we're walking round the rest of Oadby, the bit south of the A6 into this little pocket of countryside uh, with lovely views over rolling hills and then we'll turn right to hit Wigston and then we'll uh, take it from there. Very hard to believe that I'm five minutes walk from that busy dual carriageway. But I am. So we're just uh, moving towards the edge of Wigston now across uh, this nice field about to hit Leicester again just been across that lovely golf course and Wigston is an, el an old settlement 
it appears in the Doomsday Book as Witchingston. It uh, had its name changed to Wigston because St Wigston was buried there. So St Wigston was a Mercian prince who was assassinated and became a martyr, hence the St Wigston. Later on it became uh, known as Wigston Two Spires because it has two churches. There's All Saints and St Wiston's, which is the other name for St Wigston. And then as all of these inner Leicestershire villages, it developed hand frame knitting and then industrialised hosiery with a number of factories uh, being built there. Hence its urban development in the 19th century. Wigston has a number of uh, alumni. The mother of Jonathan Swift lived here. Uh, Graham Chapman of Monty Python lived here for a while with his dad in the police station. And George Davenport, who apparently was a famous highwayman, although I've not heard of him, was also born in Wigston and probably plied his trade on the A6 nearby. Wigston is now a large conurbation of Leicester with no real clear countryside between it and the city. And any minute now, we'll hit that. Just see the edges of it coming into view now across this field. A few houses at the edge of Leicester. Houses of Wigston coming into view now, the shores of Leicester approaching. And my plan is to turn left and try and keep as close to the edge of that estate as possible until I hit Newton Road. Not sure we're going to get that much more countryside on this walk, but it's going to be interesting, whatever we find. And here we are again, right on the edge of Leicester. Houses to my right, pavement connected all the way to the city centre, countryside to my left, rolling out towards Great Glen and Market Harbour. And now we dive into the outskirts of that estate, try and keep the countryside on the left and the houses on the right. And they very kindly put this little strip of niceness around the outside of the houses. It's absolutely lovely walking down here, really nice. Well here we are coming onto Newton Lane where it's a right turn and then carry on threading my way through the houses to pick up the next footpath. It's very pleasant this bit of Wigston. Us Charnwood snobs think it's a bit rough around here but we're clearly wrong. So let's go down Guthlaxton Way. Interestingly that's the name of the Lord of the Manor who used to own all of Wigiston in the Doomsday Book anyway. So there he is commemorated in this street. Here's the footpath going back to the countryside or the edge of the countryside. So here we are once again on the edge of Leicester heading down towards the uh, Grand Union Canal and South Wigston. Doesn't look like it's going to be the edge of Leicester for very much longer does it? And here we have an important point. This bridge over the middle main line. So as I walk across this bridge I move from Wigston to South Wigston and uh, just ahead of us there is the Grand Union Canal and then we're going to turn right down there to South Wigston.
and here we have Grand Union, Leicester Arm heading up into Leicester and we're going to follow it through to Kilby Bridge into South Wigston. So here is Kilby Bridge, as evidenced by the bridge. 11 years since we moored up here um, in a canal boat on our way round the Leicester Ring. We went and had curry and a pint for a fiver, I think, in the pub I just walked past. Ah, happy memories. So here we have Pochin's Bridge, presumably commemorating Henry Davis Pochin, who was a manufacturing chemist. Obviously became rich because he owned the Bodnan Estate, which is now the National Trust's Bodnan Garden. And he is a Wigston son, um, related to William Pochin, and I guess the same Pochins that owned Barkby Hall, which we saw on the last segment of the loop. So there we are, some links here between the Pochins of Barkby and the Pochins of Wigston. Well, right, it's got a little bit windy, so time to try out my new lapel mic. Uh, see whether that helps and tell you a bit about South Wigston, because that's where we're coming into now. And South Wigston is not an ancient settlement. It was all fields until the latter half of the 19th century when a brick maker called Orson Wright built a brickworks and built a model town to house the workers in his brickworks. Funnily enough most of the old town is built of bricks uh, and is laid out in a grid system which can be seen on a satellite photo uh, which I'll source and insert here. So the brickworks closed in the 1930s but there was other industry there as well Morrison's electric cars that made milk floats Toon and Black's footwear, a Dunmore's biscuits that was subsequently taken over by Nabisco. Uh, but now most of that's gone. Most of the factory sites have been uh, infilled with uh, new housing. And the main economy of South Wigston appears to be retail. So canals have this habit of trying to keep as rural as possible for as long as possible, it seems. But they have to give up in the end. We can see we're now beginning to dive into the outskirts again, this time of South Wigscon, with the canal skirting around this housing estate. Um, but still, very picturesque, and I like canals when they start to enter cities, and you get that juxtaposition of uh, the urban and the rural. Still skirting around Leicester on this canal, houses and industry to our right but we've still got the countryside stretching out the other way so these aren't grand houses by any stretch of the imagination they're very nice houses but you know well within price bracket of your average person imagine having this at your foot your doorstep just be able to nip down and wander along the canal taking the peace and uh, the lovely trees coming out in blossom at this time of year. Absolutely wonderful. And if you've got a small enough boat, you could moor it at the bottom of your garden. How cool would that be? So at Champions Bridge, the canal gives up flirting with the city and decides to take the plunge and starts heading for Leicester and we turn away and start heading towards Blaby. 
and here's the saw which uh, the canal uses through Leicester as part of the Grand Union navigation all the way up to the Trent and there's a church on the edge of Blaby we're not going into Blaby we're going to turn left in keeping with the Leicester outer orbital path to skirt around the edge just coming into the outskirts of Blaby now just going to graze them and then as I said head off diagonally left to keep to the outskirts so Blaby as the name might suggest is an Anglo-Saxon settlement Blair's place Blair's settlement um, and it's a pretty little village at its heart but of course it has been surrounded by Leicester and so there's lots of uh, housing on the outskirts around a quaint village centre. Notable because Sue Townsend apparently was born near here and took many of Adrian Mole's experiences from her life in and around Blaby. Uh, we're going to skirt round it on our way to our final destination of Narborough through uh, some industrial areas I think which will make a change uh, I'm not quite sure how we're going to find our way through but here goes let's enjoy this countryside while we can Civilised semi-urban walking people out for a little stroll with their dogs and their kids. City starts just over there. Well, apparently I've been following the Guthlaxton Trail, which is interesting. Now what I've got to do is find my way through this housing estate to pick up the next footpath that carries us round uh, Blaby and then across some pretty busy roads. And here we go. Back down one of these semi-urban paths, um, out round the southern edge of Blaby, heading towards the M1 ultimately, and then Narborough. This is absolutely lovely. Another one of those paths that literally goes round the edge of the houses. Leicester starts just a few hundred yards to my right but uh, you could be in the middle of the country. So according to the map, I should find my footpath down here. In this new build, I hope they haven't diverted it. And here it is. Haven't they made it posh? It's reverted to type now though. But it's only a short one. So now I've got to go across this road without getting killed, pick up the path on the other side and then it really gets tricky. And for the next mile or so there's no real footpath, I'm just going to be finding my way through housing estates and industrial estates to get myself across the M1, which is the next major landmark. So I'll just wend my way down these little streets, trying not to get lost, and see where we get to. More housing estates. See, I quite like these. Call me a Philistine. But each one of these houses is a nice place for family to live. A nice peaceful street. Safe for the kids. What more would you want, really? So here's something I suspected for a while. We are now in Whetstone. We passed from Blaby to Whetstone. And I think that happened when we crossed that big road, more or less. So Whetstone, well, it is an old village, but now it's just part of Leicester, really. Famous, however, for the, as the place where Sir Frank Whittle developed the jet engine. Um, Lotterworth seems to have that honour around here, but I think he initially developed it here. Also famous uh, since Frank Whittle's factory then went on to develop parts for the nuclear power industry in the 1970s and 1980s and more recently the whetstone has become a measure of computer performance developed in the General Electric plant here in Whetstone. So there we are, 
fame. Just walking along Wetston Brook here, and then we've got another housing estate and an industrial estate to negotiate. Whetstone is also famous for the Whetstone Tip, which I visited during lockdown. Great day out that was. Um, only place that takes paint around here. Let's try down here. Seems to be in the right direction. It makes a change from walking through a housing estate. So this is one of these nice roads that developers seem to build around the periphery of their estates. Presumably for the benefit of the residents so they can go on a nice little walk and still see the countryside that used to be where their estate once stood. Or now stands, I should say. Anyway, convenient for me because it's taking me in exactly the direction I want to go. So down here, Emperor Way, is the one big challenge of this walk, which is how to transit from here to the industrial estate so I can gain access to a road that goes under the M1. I've no idea how I'm going to do that, so here we go. I think this is a duck-based estate. So as I feared, all these are cul-de-sacs with a uh, line of trees and fencing between us and the industrial estate. So I may just have to walk out and round from this estate, which is going to put slightly further on the route. Mm. Well, I don't fancy climbing over that in full view of everybody. Ripping my trousers and what else on those razor sharp spikes. So we'll just keep going until we see a way round. No joy down Shell Duck Way. So I found my way out via Harlequin Way. Now I'm walking to meet the main road that I'll have to double back down to uh, find my way under the M1. Slight route variation which I will note when I'm writing the book. And here at last is the M1. And according to the map, I should find a footpath just the other side of it. And here it is, look at that, right by the M1. So here we are, across another golf course, played in the shadow of the M1 and the noise and pollution of all that traffic. I don't think they're very keen on walkers, they blocked off the footpath so I'll just keep my head down and get out of it. Well, we've got that over with. Yeah, just walking away from that golf course now. Um, general tip to golf course owners and landowners. If you have a legal right of way through your property, way mark it thoroughly. Then you won't get walkers wandering all over the place because they're lost. Luckily, I had the GPS on my map so I could follow the route pretty closely. But, uh, there weren't many clues on the ground. Anyway, we're now coming back into one of the last of the housing estates, I think. I just have to find my way to the road that's going down to Narborough uh, through this next estate. So we're nearly at journey's end of part two of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path. So I'm just walking towards Cosby Road where I'm going to turn right and walk through Littlethorpe to Narborough Station. And I think Littlethorpe is probably going to be the jumping off point for Section 3 of the Leicester Outer Orbital Path. So I hope you've enjoyed Section 2. I think it's been a brilliant walk. Finding your way is always fun. Uh, much better than following some preordained walk book. Always have your challenges, but feeling of achievement to have found my way through. And uh, once again, fascinating to see the points where the countryside and the city join. Beautiful countryside right on the doorstep 
of the outer reaches of Leicester. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you subscribe, like it, hit the bell for the next one and I look forward to seeing you next time, probably Leicester Outer Orbital Path Section 3, but you don't know, might be somewhere completely different. Bye for now.